In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher, you are right in saying, He is one, and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself, is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God and no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's Gospel, this man asked Jesus a super important question, the essential question, which is the greatest commandment in the law? This question basically means, what should I really be doing? What's essential to my life? What should my life really be all about? What's the most important thing to do? The most important thing to learn how to do? And Jesus' answer is, is a great answer because it really simplifies life for us. It really makes life uh, something that um, takes on a, a unity of meaning, a unity of purpose. Because Jesus' answer is very simple. He says, he says basically, love God and love others. Like, this is the point of life. This is why I've been made. I've been made to love God and to love others, and to be loved by God, and to be loved by others. And so this gives us a great, um, a great criteria uh, with which to judge our actions and with which to judge our daily life. Can I do this thing that I'm doing for love of God? If I can do it for love of God, then it's something I can do. It's not sinful. The only thing that we can't do for love of God is something that offends God, something that's a sin. And then if I want to do it well, am I doing it for the love of God? Those are two great questions. Whatever I'm doing, can I do it for the love of God? Is it something that can be ordered to God's love, ordered to God's love for me and my love for him? And is it something that I can actually do for love of God? Before I do whatever I'm doing today, um, watching a show, uh, helping my kids with their homework, doing my homework if I'm a student, can I do this for love of God? And if it's a good thing, if it doesn't offend God, yes, you can do it for the love of God. And then, am I doing it for the love of God? Well, to do that, all you have to do is to offer it to God. Whatever good thing you're doing, offer it to God, and it becomes an act of love of God. And in this time, um, which is so difficult for us, because so many good things in our life, so many blessings of God, are kind of being taken away from us, um, it's hard to go out to a restaurant. All the restaurants are closed. Uh, many people can't go to work. Many people uh, have less money than they usually would. Um, many people are finding it difficult to find food. Hopefully, all of you who are watching me are, are still in good health. Maybe many people are being deprived of their health. And so it's a difficult time. It's a time when many good things are being taken from us. But if we think about life in the light of the gospel, life in the light of what our Lord teaches us, we realize that we still have what's essential. We still have what's essential to live a good life and a very good life, which is God and others. God is still in your life. Other people are still in your life. And so you can still grow in, in what's most essential, in love of Him and love of others. And how do we grow in love of God? Well, first of all, by prayer. Find a quiet place in your house. Make a, little, make a little space in your house or apartment, which is your prayer corner, which is your place to sit with God, to learn how to appreciate God, to listen to Him. And how do we love Him in these times? We love Him by trusting Him above all, by trusting His plan, by asking Him for strength. To ask God for strength, to trust Him, is to love Him. Trust pleases God. When we trust God our Father, it makes Him happy with us. 
to trust God in these times is to love God. And then others, the people we live with, to serve them more, the people that we see are suffering more than we are, to pray for them, to find ways of offering what we're going through for them, to keep people in mind, right? to live this together, right? not to be consumed or overburdened with our own cares, but to keep others very much in mind. And so even though so many things are being taken away from us, God never takes away what's essential. God never takes away his presence so we can love him, and he never takes away the presence of others so we can love them. So we ask God today, Lord, teach me to learn how to do things out of love for you, and teach me to keep serving others during this difficult time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.